I've only ever been in love once. Everyone's told a lie at some point, right? We know it's wrong, but we do it instinctively. It's a defence mechanism. For others, it's a living. For Donald Trump and Boris Johnson, it's a way of life. But in 2015, Sam Barlow distanced himself from Silent Hill to create her story and brought us a narrative video game unlike any we'd seen before. The question is, how would he fare with the often tricky second album? The answer is here with Telling Lies, a similarly structured narrative adventure focused around a man and the relationships he's cultivated around him. The thing is, it's really hard to talk about a game like this, let alone show it without giving too much away. But we're going to try. Like her story, we find ourselves sitting at a computer terminal in the shoes of an as yet unknown protagonist as she pours through hours of video footage to find clues as to what exactly has happened in the lives of these people. As you watch the videos and read the subtitles, you'll focus on words within the text and typing these into the in-game search bar brings up more video clips. Some of these are more revealing than others. Let me just state for the record that you do not need to watch all the video footage to suss out what's going on, although it may take you some time to piece everything together. I've been discussing this with colleagues over several days and some of them have managed to get to the credits in just shy of three hours. But I've had a list of 98 keywords to search up and I have made it through 41 before I triggered the credit sequence. However long you want this game to last is up to you. It all depends on how much of the six hours of recorded video you want to go through before you decide to do what the game requires and finalise proceedings. We eventually find out that the man's name is David. We meet his wife and child and find out that he's currently living away from home due to him working on a project for his employer. While he's living away, David is lonely as anyone would be and takes to chatting to his wife and kid via webcam. However, it's after those people have gone to bed that we see David's lonely, dark obsession of talking to a cam girl start to come to the fore and there are several moments within the footage where I didn't feel very comfortable with what I was witnessing, yet it isn't even guaranteed that you will see the same stuff that I saw. Such is the open-ended nature of the investigation work that you can literally bypass a load of the story on your path to the ending, yet still wind up with the conclusion that the game always intended you to. In the early stages, there's so much open to interpretation about David, his wife, the cam girl, and the other people you meet through the clips. I must have thrown about five different possibilities as to what was going on before the game came to a sudden lurch that I wasn't expecting and some shocking revelations became known. This is surely a sign of excellent storytelling design, ensuring everyone can find out what's going on yet everyone can still see something that their friends haven't. Because this is based on webcamming, there is one glaring weakness in how it's structured, and that's through the one-sided conversations each clip shows as they're taking place. All the conversations can be paired up, and for the most part, searching for the right keyword will bring them side by side for easy pairing. But why these videos aren't already paired up to begin with is a bit of a mystery to me. I get that in a way this is a measure to elongate the game's runtime, and maybe you put in extra effort to find the conclusion, but it wouldn't really suffer for video pairing at all. If anything, it'd actually benefit from it. The reason why this would benefit is solely down to one thing, Here? uncomfortable silence. Max. A lot of the clips are quite short, while some short ones are actually cut down versions of longer ones, which can be viewed in their entirety should you search for the right keyword. The problem is that some of them are like six or more minutes long, do you see where I'm going with this? No? Okay, so in a conversation someone talks and the other person listens. As a result, one of the parties is being quiet. This means that for much of a six to eight minute long video, you get someone staring at a camera, listening intently to the point you start to wonder if you've missed the fact that the video had already ended. And here's a hint, it hadn't. Considering that this is the only real gripe I have with telling lies, it's a testimony to how good Sam Barlow and the team at Furious B are at spinning a psychoanalytical yarn. The characters here are well fleshed out and feel actually real. It's like being in The Truman Show, a soap opera you didn't know existed and you were a participant in. As you study the clips and make notes of the words you might need to revisit, you can't help but get drawn into the web of deceit, but also feel empathy for those involved. These may just be actors, but their acting evokes very real emotion in the viewer, and for that everyone involved in projects like these deserves all the plaudits we can lay upon them. I guess it stands to reason to say that if you enjoyed her story, then you'll be right at home with telling lies. But, and this is a big but, many people will still scoff at something like this for not being a real game, and let's face it, those people are wrong. Doing yourself out of an incomparable narrative experience doesn't make you any more of a gamer than anyone else, and learning to experience different things such as this can help you grow and appreciate the other games you play more. 
Telling Lies is another excellent piece of narrative game design from Sam Barlow, and I sincerely hope there's more to come. Oh, who's your ex-husband? Me and my big mouth. Ooh, he wants her. Hey, Pookie! I just meant to be affectionate. <laughs> What's the matter, babe?